Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Canadian Children's Book Center's Book Awards. And to answer your question, yeah, it's me. Your master of ceremonies, Tony Kim. You might know me from CBC Kids as well as my critically acclaimed work as the master of ceremonies, rather, for last year's Canadian Children's Book Awards. So thank you so much for inviting me back to host these important awards again. I had such a blast last time that in anticipation for this event, I decided to stay here. I mean, what can I say? Rent's expensive in Toronto. So I just curled up on stage reading every single nominated slash winning book from last year. And it took a while. But the people at the Harborfront Center have just been lovely. They've been lowering me food and drinks and lotion from a little basket. They take good care of me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'm now legally obligated to let you know that the Harborfront Center has not been harboring me for the last year. I made that whole story up. Could you imagine what I could do as an author? Maybe I'll try my hand at getting one of these awards myself. But until then, we actually have some actual amazing, talented authors to celebrate. Individuals who are extremely talented, skilled creators, and who make the difficult job of writing for kids seem so effortless. And once again, the Canadian children's book scene is on fire, and we are so happy to have these amazing works grace our eyeballs. So, what do you say? Are we ready to get this party started? I'm looking at five people in the empty auditorium here, but I'm assuming everyone at home is giving me two emphatic thumbs up, so let us do this. After last year's virtual awards ceremony, one resounding reaction was, Hey, Tony, that was a lot of fun. I hope we never have to do it again. That's my impression of you. That's what I think you sound like, audience. And yet, here we are. We have seen, though, from the past year and a half that Canadian authors and illustrators are publishing some of their best books ever. And we will not allow for even a never-ending world pandemic to put a damper on the recognition that these great books deserve. Stories have been one of the most powerful forces in my life. Growing up, books were my best friends. Going to a scary doctor's appointment? Grab a book. Long, boring car ride? Grab a book. Done finishing a really, really good book? Guess what? You can grab another book. You know, it, it, they help me when I'm feeling down. They empower me when I'm feeling bold. They keep me company when I'm feeling a bit lonely. So I am so grateful to be here to celebrate stories with all of you today. And these awards are made possible thanks to the collaboration with our partner, the Toronto International Festival of Authors, and the sponsors of our awards, TD Bank Group, A. Charles Bailey, and the Fleck Family Foundation. Now, we would also like to acknowledge and thank the numerous individuals who've donated funds to our awards. So, in the spirit of connecting virtually, for all you fans of social media out there, please, Feel free to post your impressions of tonight's show to your favorite platform using our official hashtag CB, sorry, CCBC Book Awards and tagging at Kids Book Center. Now, I would like to share with you a message from Zane Vegley, the president of the CCBC Board of Directors, who extends his warm welcome. Hello everyone, Zane Veldry here, volunteer president of the Canadian Children's Book Center Board of Directors. Uh, on behalf of my board colleagues and everyone at the Canadian Children's Book Center, I wanted to welcome you to tonight's ceremonies, to tonight's event, an incredibly special evening, uh, not just for all of those that are present here today and nominated, uh, but for your families, for your friends, for the larger Canadian literature community, uh, as we celebrate the, the content, the work uh, that you have all produced to make uh, lives, to make stories even more richer uh, for, for the rest of us. You know, I won't speak for too long, but I did want to say a couple of things. You know, as we've experienced through the pandemic over the last couple of years, I think one thing has become increasingly clear. Uh, the sense of story and the sense of community matter so much more than we may have ever realized. You know, even in the past year, our country has gone through not just a racial reckoning, uh, but a massive reckoning on, on reconciliation, on truth and reconciliation broadly, on our role as Canadians, on our role as active citizens to the broader texture and fabric of this country. And so to all of the authors, to all of the illustrators, to all of the publishers, to anyone involved helping tell the stories, 
of Canada, to help tell the stories of perhaps a Canada many of us do not know about or weren't able to experience firsthand, but are using literature and specifically children's literature for our kids, for our students, uh, for, for uh, our nephews, our nieces, uh, for everyone across this country to, to not just say that you have to have a certain lived experience to understand what a version of a truly Canadian story is, but that our books, the ever-growing vibrancy of our stories, the ever-growing diversity of these stories help be that window and that mirror to worlds that we may not have lived, but certainly can now access in much more meaningful, textured and nuanced ways. So to all of the authors, illustrators, publishers, to everyone nominated to all the finalists, congratulations and thank you. We've realized that stories matter so much more than ever before. And you are on the front lines of creating those stories uh, that will be a massive imprint uh, in terms of not just how uh, children of today and tomorrow think and consume, uh, but how they form their opinions about this great country and the people that, that live in it. So thank you for that. I also wanted to use this opportunity on behalf of my board colleagues in the CCBC to thank all of the sponsors. You know, COVID has been an easy time and would have been an absolutely almost warranted time for many folks to just pull the plug and say, we don't want to be part of something like this anymore. But thank you to all of you for sticking around with us through the virtual ceremonies, through uh, all the Zoom organizing and planning, uh, to sticking with the finalists, the creators, the authors, the illustrators, those that continue to create the culture and the stories uh, of the ever-changing and ever more dynamic fabric of our country uh, with their stories, with their art, with their illustration, and with their time and energy publishing these works. So to everyone nominated tonight, congratulations. You are winners to all of us. Uh, and frankly, we are the winners uh, overall, I should say, as the Canadian public that gets to consume uh, the art that you have created, the stories that you are telling, uh, and the narratives that you are bringing into our zeitgeist. Thank you for doing what you do. And behalf of everyone at the CCBC, and especially uh, my board colleagues, I want to thank you and have a great evening. Thank you so much, Zane, for that amazing message, very eloquently put. You're absolutely right that we are very lucky to have the Canadian Children's Book Centre. In fact, this year marks the 45th anniversary of the Book Centre. And here is a video to celebrate this important milestone and the work that they do. The Canadian Children's Book Centre has been bringing Canadian books and young readers together since 1976. During Book Week, over 20,000 kids across Canada get to meet authors, illustrators, and storytellers in person or online. It's awesome! The TD Grade 1 Book Giveaway delivers over 550,000 books to Grade 1 children across Canada each year. For some kids, it's the first book they've ever owned. Every year, Canadian authors and illustrators receive $175,000 in prizes during the CCBC Book Awards. Amazing! Over 100,000 people have watched all the cool videos on BiblioVideo, the Canadian Children's Book Center's YouTube channel all about Canadian kids' books. The Canadian Children's Books News has published almost 8,000 book reviews in more than 150 issues. Wow! Best Books for Kids and Teens has recommended over 12,000 books for kids like me. And there's even more, like workshops, podcasts, and celebrations. Happy 45th birthday, Book Center. Thank you for everything you do. Wow, that is a lot of stuff. And did it really say that we were giving out $175,000 in prizes? So that means by proxy, I'm giving out $175,000 in prizes. So uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty important right now. And that is a lot of money that's going towards celebrating and supporting the Canadian book industry. Another program that was mentioned in the video is the TD Grade 1 Book Giveaway. 
Now, this year's title is Malaika's Costume by Nadia L. Hone and Irene Luxbacker. The special edition of the book has been printed at Friesen's Corporation in Manitoba, and we are shipping them out across the country at this very moment. So thank you to Nadia and Irene who are helping launch this year's program, and have launched the year's program rather, earlier this year during TIFA, with grade one students from Spruce Glen Public School in Huntsville, Ontario, and Sir Sanford Fleming in Vancouver. Now the 2022 Canadian Children's Book Week will take place May 1st to May 7th. The call for schools and libraries interested in hosting an author, illustrator, or storyteller will go out in early December. So keep up to date by signing up for the CCBC monthly newspaper or by checking out bookweek.ca. And now, let's get to the awarding, shall we? I have the immense pleasure to introduce you today to a very, very special award. This is the very first year of the Gene Little First Novel Award. This award honors the late Gene Little and celebrates the talent of newcomer authors who've written their first novel for middle grade readers. Here is a video that explains the importance of Jean Little's legacy and this new award in her name. Introducing the Jean Little First Novel Award. Jean Little is undoubtedly one of Canada's most well-known and beloved authors for young readers. Raised in Guelph, Ontario, she developed a passion for writing at a young age and went on to achieve great things despite many challenges, including low vision. Over the course of her long career, she wrote over 50 books, received numerous awards and honours, and touched the lives of children across the country. When she passed away in March 2020, fellow children's authors Maggie DeVries, Kit Pearson, and Sarah Ellis championed the creation of an award in Jean's name through the Canadian Children's Book Centre. Both Canadian and international fans of Jean Little responded to the call and donated funds to make this award possible. When she started off writing, she had very few mentors in Canada. Her path was one that she had to bushwhack herself, and she did. By the end of her long and prolific career, that was a well-worn path and one that I myself walked. So in gratitude and admiration, I conceived the notion for a book award to honor Jean Little. I'm so glad that that's what we chose because Aunt Jean won an award for her first novel, Mine for Keeps, 60 years ago, not long after I was born actually, and that award really launched her career. So I see this award as an invitation to new writers uh, as something that tells them that we want to hear their voices. And I think that's an important message and I think it's one that Aunt Jean would have wholeheartedly approved of. So I'm, I'm happy to be involved in this. The nominees for the Jean Little First Novel Award are Journal of a Traveling Girl, written by Nadine Nima and illustrated by Archie Beaverhoe, published by Wandering Fox Books. My Name is Kony Sola, written by Elisa Siegel, published by Second Story Press. No Vacancy, written by Tsipora Cohen, published by Groundwood Books. Thank you very much to these new authors for sharing their stories. And if you missed it this past Wednesday, the panel discussion with these three shortlisted authors, moderated by Kit Pearson, is still available to view through the TIFA programming. Now, before I announce the winner, I'd like to thank all of the fans of Gene Little who contributed to this award through personal donations. And now it's time for the winner of the Gene Little First Novel Award. We have our trusty bag over here, and the winner is no Vacancy by Zipora Cohen. Congratulations, Zipora. This is very, very cool. And in fact, this year, we did something a little bit different with the virtual format. We wish that we had the production capacity to have all the finalists join us with a live video. You know, we kind of wanted to make it like the Oscars with everyone live streaming in, but who knows, maybe next year. You know what, I'm not even gonna jinx it. Next year, 
I'm gonna see you all in person, how about that? Okay, I'm gonna knock on some wood here. But to, in order to make things a little bit more authentic, we decided to record some authentic reactions to the authors hearing that their book just won a prestigious award. So here is a video of Tsipora finding out the good news from Amanda, our event and program coordinator. You are the winner of the Jean Little first novel. Of <laughs> no way. <laughs> uh, the cat just said, thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Shoot. <laughs> I am so delighted to be here. I keep pinching myself. I still have trouble thinking of myself even as a published author, let alone someone who has been asked to make a pandemic era acceptance speech video. So first off, go read my co-finalists books. Alyssa Siegel's My Name is Kanasola and Nadine Nima's Journal of a Traveling Girl. They are great stories, and I'm so proud that No Vacancy is part of this diverse group of first novels. Which brings me to how lucky children's book creators are to have the Canadian Children's Book Centre in their corner. When I tell people I write for kids, sometimes they ask, why not for adults? As if writing for children isn't as important. I don't know who to attribute it to, but there's this quote I love. A child who reads will be an adult who thinks. Literary awards that focus on children's literature, like the awards tonight, recognize the value of books for children. This is no small thing. Much gratitude to the CCBC for all the hard work you do to keep Canadian children's books in the limelight and to support their creators. Because here's the thing, writing is hard. Writing a novel is one of the hardest things I've done. Knowing there are people cheering me on from the sidelines, people who value what I write and whom I write for, helps me keep going. I keep reminding myself that this is a first novel award, not an only novel award. So thank you to the founders of this Jean Little first novel award, Sarah Ellis, Kit Pearson, and Maggie DeVries, and to the jurists, Deirdre Baker, Maggie DeVries, and Kit Pearson, who had the enviable job of reading piles of books and the not enviable job of having to choose a winner. There is no good book without a good publisher, a good editor, a good book designer, a good marketing team, and more. So thank you to my Groundwood Books gang, Karen Lee, Samantha, Samara Al-Hilal, Shelley Tanaka, Michael Solomon, Kirsten Brassard, Samantha Diwali, Natasha Barry, Sonia Lilly, Fred Horler, and Nan Froman. You have welcomed me into my first literary home with open arms, and I couldn't be luckier than to work with all of you. I look forward to the day when we can all be in the same room together. And a shout out to Sam Calda for his awesome cover. Having grown up outside of Canada, I didn't grow up reading Jean Little's books. So when the shortlist for this award was announced, I picked up a few of her novels to get a better idea of what this Canadian literary icon was all about. Imagine my surprise and delight when the first book I read, Mama's Going to Buy You a Mockingbird, first published in 1984, included in the acknowledgments a thank you to her editor, Shelley Tanaka, who was my editor for No Vacancy. To paraphrase Jean's original thank you, Miriam and the Jewel Motor Inn would never have made it without you, Shelley. Jean Little was not afraid to tackle hard topics in her books for middle schoolers. Topics like the death of a parent or sibling, the Nazis' rise to power in Germany, drug addiction, and the foster care system. She treated her readers with the respect that they deserve, never writing down to them or telling them what to think. I hope I've captured a little of that magic in No Vacancy. And last, to those of you out there who think you have a book in you, listen to that inner voice. You're not too old, too young, too absorbed in another career, too busy, too anything. Let the people around you, your partner, kids, extended family, friends, and colleagues, let them support you the way mine did. Go right. Thank you for that, Sephora. And congratulations on this well-deserved award for your first novel. 
And a little birdie told me that you're in the middle of writing your second one. We cannot wait. Now we are moving on to the traditional audience favorite, the Amy Mathers Teen Book Award. Amy Mathers' marathon of books in 2014 was a coup de force, inspiring readers across the country while raising money and awareness for Canadian authors for teens. Amy was inspired by Rick Hansen's Marathon of Hope to accomplish a great feat and all in support for a cause that she holds dear. So here is Amy Mathers' message to our five 2021 finalists. Congratulations to the 2021 Amy Mathers Teen Book Award nominees. I was enthralled by your storytelling and while reading, when interrupted, I was jolted back into reality from the worlds you had each created. A special congratulations to the winner. I hope you are able to use the prize money to create another enticing and eye-opening story. Thank you so much. And the nominees for the Amy Mathers Teen Book Award, sponsored by the Canadian Children's Book Centre are Charming as a Verb, written by Ben Philippe, published by Balzer and Bray. Facing the Sun, written by Janice Lynn Mather, and published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Followers, written by Raziel Reed, and published by Penguin Teen Canada. He Must Like You, written by Danielle Young Ullman, published by Penguin Teen Canada. The Silence of Bones, written by June Herr, published by Fywell and Friends. And the winner is... Facing the Sun by Janice Lynn Mather, published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Congratulations, and here is Janice finding out that exciting news. You are the winner of the Amy Mathers Teen Book Award. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. it's such an honor. I did not, I did not guess, oh my. Good evening. It's a tremendous honor to accept the Amy Mathers Teen Book Award, especially amongst the four other incredibly talented authors whose books were also shortlisted this year. Thank you so much to Amy Mathers and to the jury members, Dr. Dave Jenkinson, Kathleen Martin, and Ardo Omer for selecting Facing the Sun as this year's award-winning book. My sincere gratitude to those who have made this award possible the sponsor, the Canadian Children's Book Centre, and to the donors who so generously support this important award. To each of you, thank you. The Amy Mathers Team Book Award is an incredibly meaningful one, this year in particular. For me, likely for most of us, this past year and a half has been incredibly difficult and deeply isolating. But Amy Mathers is a truly outstanding woman who, under duress, undertook her marathon of books and transformed trial into passion and victory. And Amy Mathers continues to champion, promote, and bring light to YA authors from across Canada, encouraging us all to read deeply, widely, voraciously, and with courage. This award is an incredible honor and it's also a tremendous encouragement, a much needed reminder that support and community can take many forms. It's an invitation to push our limits even under duress, to not only create, but to work creatively to find solutions and ways to bring light to what matters to us, our communities, and the land that we call home. The Amy Mathers Teen Book Award is an inspiration to persevere with dedication and with an open heart. I also thank my editorial and publishing team at Simon & Schuster, to my fantastic and eagle-eyed editor, Catherine Ledone, and Rita Silva, Associate Director of Publicity at Simon & Schuster Canada, along with so many others. Thank you to my agent, advocate, and friend, Rachel Lutofsky, and to the rest of the Cook McDermott agency team. And bringing up the rear, because they always have my back, to my husband, Jason, and our daughter, Nisa, 
thank you and love. To all of you watching, gratitude, be well, and let's take the inspiration that Amy Mathers embodies into our work and our lives. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janice, for that inspiring message. Your book is such a contribution to young adult literature, and your, ch your characters, rather, truly speak to teen readers. As Amy said earlier, hopefully this award spurs you on to continue publishing these wonderfully written stories. Now, as we talked about before, the CCBC supports talented book creators so that they will share with Canadian children these important stories and books that will entertain and enlighten them. Many of the programs are supported through membership and fundraising. The CCBC has a fundraiser going on right now as part of the Scotiabank Charity Challenge called the Walk, Wheel, or Run for Reading campaign. Donations to the Walk, Wheel, or Run for Reading campaign can be made until the end of October, and that's only two more days. And guess what? The team has called themselves the Speed Readers. I love those play on words. It's awesome. I love it. And they are so close to their fundraising goal that you can support their walks and runs to raise money for CCBC programming. Now, we will be giving out the CCBC's most long-standing award. Yes, this award was founded in 1988, the Jeffrey Bilson Award for Historical Fiction for Young People. Try saying that five times fast. This award is to honor the memory of Jeffrey Bilson, an author and academic who taught at the University of Saskatchewan for over 20 years and published historical fiction for young people. So here is Gail DeVos, the chair of the Jeffrey Bilson Award. Hello. My name is Gail DeVos, and I'm the chair of the Bilson Award for Historical Fiction for Young Readers here in Canada. I have been the chair for over 20 years, which in its own way is historical fact, not fiction. And I am very, very proud each year to be involved with this award. It started in 1988, named after Jeffrey Bilson, who himself wrote historical fiction, and it celebrates celebrates those who do their research and write so well so that our young readers know not only the history of this country but of the world outside of our borders so if you don't know our history how can you grow how can you move forward and so it always gives me so much pleasure not only reading the books but coming with the jury to a short list and in my mind those who reach the shortlist should be celebrated as much as the winner itself. And so congratulations to all of those on the shortlist and to our winner. And I know Jeffrey Bilson, well, he would be proud too to know that high caliber of writing here in Canada celebrates historical fiction year after year after year. Congratulations all. And the nominees for the Jeffrey Bilson Award for Historical Fiction for Young People, sponsored by the Canadian Children's Book Centre's Bilson Endowment Fund are Barry Squires, Full Tilt, written by Heather Smith, published by Penguin Teen Canada. The Brushmaker's Daughter, written by Kathy Kaser, published by Second Story Press. Journal of a Traveling Girl, written by Nadine Nima and illustrated by Archie Beaverhoe, published by Wandering Fox Books. The Paper Girl of Paris, written by Jordan Taylor and published by Harper Teen. Under Amelia's Wing, written by Heather Stemp and published by Nimbus Publishing. And the winner is... The Paper Girl of Paris by Jordan Taylor, published by Harper Teen. Congratulations to you, Jordan. Now, let's see how she reacted to the good news. You are the winner of the Jeffrey Bilson Historical Fiction for Young People. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh God. Thank you. Wow. Um, cool. Well, that just made my life. To the Canadian Children's Book Centre and to this year's jurors, I want to say thank you so, so much 
for awarding the Jeffrey Bilson Award for Historical Fiction for Young People to The Paper Girl of Paris. When I found out The Paper Girl of Paris had been nominated, I actually got quite emotional because I knew exactly what the Jeffrey Bilson Award was. It was the same seal that I saw as a kid on Kit Pearson's The Sky is Falling and the Lights Go On Again from the Guests of War trilogy about British children who were evacuated to Canada during World War II. Those Kit Pearson books made me fall in love with history and with historical fiction from a super young age, and it's an incredible honor to be receiving the same award all these years later. I want to give a huge congratulation to my fellow finalists, Heather Smith, Kathy Kaser, Nadine Nima, Archie Beaverhoe, and Heather Stemp. Shout out to Canadian authors and illustrators who are creating awesome historical fiction. I also want to give a few more thank yous to my agent, Danielle Burby, my editor on this book, Catherine Wallace, my Canadian publicist, Maeve O'Regan, and the rest of the wonderful teams at Harper Teen and HarperCollins Canada who helped edit, design, and share this book with the world. Big, big hugs to my family and friends for their love and support, and an especially big hug to my husband, Tim, the greatest teammate in the world, who helped me research World War II France, who traveled to Paris with me and joined me as I wandered through the streets collecting details to put into this book, and who actually acted out scenes from The Paper Girl of Paris with me in our living room so we could make sure they seemed realistic. Tim, you are the best and I love you so much it physically hurts. <laughs> um, finally, The Paper Girl of Paris was my first book and it came out in the early months of the pandemic. That's why my final thank you goes to every reader who picked up this book and who supported me when the whole world felt like it was upside down. I wouldn't be here without you, and I am so, so very grateful. Thank you. Wow. There we get to really see the impact that award-winning books can have in the life of a budding author, even when they're still a kid. And it was really great to hear the shout out to Kit Pearson's novels as well. This is the inspiration of good books coming full circle, and we are here for it. And now for the Norma Fleck Award for the Canadian Children's Nonfiction. This award was established in 1999 by the Fleck Family Foundation and the Canadian Children's Book Centre to recognize and raise the profile of exceptional nonfiction books. Most other Canadian children's book prizes either evaluate fiction and nonfiction together, or they don't award nonfiction titles at all. So this award is very important to writers who have spent copious amounts of time researching and then figuring out how to best present the facts in an accessible way for young people. So here is a message from the award's founder, Jim Fleck. I am Jim Fleck. The Norma Fleck Award for the best Canadian children's nonfiction book is named in memory of my mother, who lived into her 90s. We're pleased to sponsor this distinct award because Norma Fleck believed in the importance of developing strong reading habits in her children, particularly nonfiction for its fact-based, realistic view of the world as it is. Our logo is a 1915 photo of her as the elder daughter being read to by her mother, Alice, herself a master's level 1899 gold medalist in mathematics at Queen's University. For both of them, nonfiction reading was an essential element in the education of their children. This year, we have five finalists all wonderful books that have been selected by our independent jury from over 50 submitted. The winner will be announced very shortly. Thank you and enjoy your evening. The nominees for the Norma Fleck Award for Canadian Children's Nonfiction, sponsored by the Fleck Family Foundation are 111 Trees, How One Village Celebrates the Birth of Every Girl. Written by Rena Singh and illustrated by Marianne Ferrer. Published by Kids Can Press. Crows, Genius Birds. Written and illustrated by Kyla Vanderkloot. Published by First Second. The Eagle Mother. Written by Brett D. Hoosen. Illustrated by Natasha Donovan. And published by High Water Press. Pow Wow, A Celebration Through Song and Dance. Written by Karen Pheasant Nigongaway. Published by Orca Book Publishers. 
This is your brain on stereotypes. How science is tackling unconscious bias. Written by Tanya Lloyd Kai. Illustrated by Drew Shannon and published by Kids Can Press. And the winner is. Pow Wow, a celebration of song and dance, written by Karen Pheasant Nigongawe and published by Orca Book Publishers. Congratulations, Karen. Now, let's take a visit to her home in Calgary, receiving that exciting news. Pow Wow, a celebration through song and dance is the winner. Miigwech. Bonjour, Danse, and greetings to everybody. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for the organizers, the hosts, especially <clears throat> Jimmy Gwedge, for this moment in time in Canada. As people in Canada and the world realize what colonialism did to our families, to our communities, it is a vital time to recognize our audacious, brilliant, and commanding spirit that was flogged. Regardless, we are in a celebratory mode. Never have we had so many Anishinaabeg Indigenous scholars, authors, educators. We fill every faction of society, being proud of our culture, our stories, and not denying our brilliance. Here we are. I give thanks, gratitude. First, I'd like to thank, full of appreciation for my mother, to my parents who are residential school survivors. My mother who took us on long Saturday morning walks to the local library to seek solitude and escape in our neighborhood library. To all the librarians who value the different stories. To my fellow nominees, Rina, Kyla, Brett and Tanya, your work is great. To the Children's Book Center, the Fleck Family Foundation, who recognize that Canada's Anishinaabeg Indigenous people's truth is vital to a society that is healing from colonialism. On that note, also to Orca Publishers and team, Andrew, Kirsty, Olivia, Mary Ellen, Miigwech, to honor the TRC calls for action. To those who believed in me and put my name forward, both Richard Van Camp and late Greg Younging. To Jeanette Armstrong of the Inakwin Center, who looked astonished when I asked her if I could be her one of her writing instructors. And at the time, I didn't have a clue how to put one of my stories into a paragraph or about run-on sentences and normal English isn't verb-based. Thank goodness she didn't accept my second offer, which was to wash floors and do dishes. Miigwech to all the communities who fundraise all year to host our annual celebrations of song and dance to celebrate our resiliency over colonialism, over intergenerational issues, and to keep our families together. Miigwech to all the lodge keepers who keep our ceremonies active and current, too many to name. To my sisters, to my brothers, aunties, uncles, extended family who opened their door to, to me, to my children, no matter what time it was, fed me, loved me, and accepted me without judgment for all the years I was on the Powell Trail. To my English professors who wrangled with my verb-based English and provided the crucial support to get me to understand rhetorical analysis. Most of all, to my late dad, whose stories beheld innate strength, and to my children, Jesse, Matthew, and Sophie, and all of my grandchildren, may these stories empower you. Miigwech, hi hi. Wow. Now, you may be wondering how these amazing books are selected for these awards. Who exactly are feeding me these books out of these bags? Well, I can guarantee you there are no magical sorting hats here, no. There is a lot of real hard work and effort that goes into the jury selection process for these award-winning books. Each year, the CCBC organizes independent juries that bring together knowledgeable Canadian experts on children's literature, from teachers to librarians to writers to academics to booksellers. So thank you to all of the jury members from coast to coast who spent hours and hours reading and sorting through books for young readers. The deliberations are not always easy, but the jury members always come to a consensus and provide us with a list of wonderful books that we are seeing honored today. And now, to present the Marilyn Bailey Picture Book Award that is celebrating its 15th anniversary. 
This is undoubtedly the sweetest award. A. Charles Bailey established this prize as a gift to his wife, Marilyn, in 2006. From nursery school teacher to editor at Chickadee Magazine, Marilyn has worn many hats over the years, and they all attest to her love for children and children's literature. Here is a message from Marilyn Bailey herself. Welcome to my grandchildren's playroom. They call it the safari room, and I do have two grandchildren who are Kenyan, so it seems quite appropriate. I'm Marilyn Bailey, and an award, a book award that is given in my name is about to be announced. It is an award that is given out to the best writer and illustrator of a Canadian children's picture book in Canada. And it's very exciting waiting to see who is going to be the winner, who are the finalists. It's given me so much pleasure to award this to my colleagues. This, this award goes to my colleagues who are enormously uh, talented and creative and I'm very much in awe of them. It's been 15 years that this award has been in place. Seems like time just whisked by. So now I'd like to congratulate the finalists. Uh, there are many little children out there that are reading your books and enjoying your books and your books are fantastic. You're you are stars in the sky, sparkling away. Thank you so much. And the nominees for the Marilyn Bailey Picture Book Award, sponsored by A. Charles Bailey, are The Barnabas Project, written and illustrated by the Fan Brothers, published by Tundra Books. Golden Threads, written by Suzanne Del Rizzo, illustrated by Mickey Sato, published by Owl Kids Books. Our Little Kitchen, written and illustrated by Jillian Tamaki, Published by Groundwood Books. Swift Fox All Along. Written by Rebecca Thomas. Illustrated by Maya McKibben. Published by Anik Press. Weekend Dad. Written by Nassim Crab And illustrated by Frank Viva. Published by Groundwood Books. And our winner is... Our Little Kitchen by Jillian Tamaki. Published by Groundwood Books. Congratulations, Jillian. Let's see what you have to say about this. You won the Marilyn Bailey picture. Oh <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I, wow, thank you. Oh my God, what amazing news to get. Hi, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, this is totally amazing and cool. Um, I'm surprised and uh, really honored uh, to be nominated alone um, al alongside all these like amazing creators, truly. Um, I have a lot of people to thank. So uh, first of all, of course, the Canadian Children's Book Center and the Bailey family, um, my team at Groundwood Books, uh, Rosie Outred, Samira Al-Halal, uh, Karen Lee, Michael Solomon, and there's so many people that uh, contribute to uh, the production of a book and um, the birthing of a book. So um, I'm not going to name everybody, but everybody, there's a whole team. So thank you to everybody um, at Groundwood. Um, my team at Abrams, uh, who helped edit uh, and shape the book significantly, including um, uh, Emma Ledbetter and Pamela no Tarantino, and um, of course, my agent, Steve Malk. Uh, I would also um, like to thank the my fellow volunteers at the Greenpoint Hunger Program, um, which was the place that inspired um, the story, uh, particularly Anne Carroll and Emily Gould, who helped me with some of the elements of the book, including the recipe... <laughs> recipes on the on the end papers um which were recipes that we cooked all the time in the kitchen and uh, i wanted to make sure that i made a functional recipe and so thank you um to them and our friend christine zunick who was also a volunteer um at the kitchen and was a real inspiration um for the book and for life uh beyond um our, our little kitchen as well. So, uh, so food insecurity is, uh, 
a, a symptom of like a bigger problem and mul a myri the myriad problems um, in our society. It's not just about food. It is often um, the case where food is the first thing to go when there's um, when times are tight and um, supports are not supporting in the way that they should. Um, and uh, I, I don't think anybody's unfamiliar with the fact that there's a housing crisis uh, in Toronto and in Canada uh, right now. So for that reason, I'm going to be donating um, the prize money uh, for this prize to Parkdale Legal, which um, is doing really vital work in in the neighborhood that I live in um, to support tenants and yeah. So thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for your book, Jillian, but also thank you for your generosity. You are a very, very special human being. Tonight, we are celebrating amazing Canadian English language books, but the CCBC Book Awards also include two French language prizes. The French ceremony, hosted by Penelope Jolicoeur, the executive director of Communication Jeunesse, was held yesterday as part of the Toronto International Festival of Authors. This year's French winner was a double header, with both the pre-Harry Black and the pre-TD going to Ma Maison Tête by Vigue, a funny and touching picture book about one boy's imaginative way of portraying what's going on inside his head. If you are interested in watching the entire ceremony that includes author and illustrator interviews with English subtitles, you can still register and watch the replay on the TIFA website by searching for pre-Harry Black or pre-TD. And now, last but certainly not least, in 2004, the Canadian Children's Book Centre and the TD Bank Group announced a brand new award. Children's Book Award, the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award for the most distinguished book of the year. This award is the biggest prize for Canadian children's books and all genres written for young people are considered. For the past 18 years, two titles have been selected every year. One in French, which Ma Maison Tête won last night, and tonight's English prize winner. For this award, all of the shortlisted titles also receive prize money. So just making it onto this list is a pretty big deal. That's really cool. Here is Farah Kurji, manager of strategy and strategy and planning rather for global corporate citizenship at TD Bank Group. Hello everyone. On behalf of TD Bank Group, I want to thank the Canadian Children's Book Center for hosting the CCBC Book Awards again this year. We love what the CCBC does and we're proud to support its mission and work to help Canadian children grow and develop through reading. Together, through the TD Grade 1 Book Giveaway Program, we've distributed over 11 million books to Grade 1 students from coast to coast over the last 21 years. In a few moments, the winner of the TD Canadian Children's Literature Awards will be announced. This award is one of the largest prizes in Canadian children's literature and celebrates truly remarkable stories. All of this year's books are amazing, each in their own way. A massive congratulations to this year's finalists and to this year's winner. Thank you for sharing your stories with us, along with your messages of inclusion and hope. Your works have captivated the hearts and minds of children across Canada. Please enjoy the rest of tonight's programming. And the nominees for the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award, sponsored by TD Bank Group, are The Barnabas Project, written and illustrated by the Fan Brothers. Published by Tundra Books. The Barren Grounds. Written by David A. Robertson. Published by Puffin Canada. A Beginner's Guide to Goodbye. Written by Melanie Mosher. Published by Nimbus Publishing. Bloom. Written by Kenneth Opal. Published by HarperCollins Publishers. When Emily Was Small. Written and illustrated by Lauren Soloy. Published by Tundra Books. Oh, those are so many great books. How could the jury decide? Well, they did. And the winner's right over here. Drum roll, please. Ooh. And the winner is... 
The Barnabas Project by the Fan Brothers, published by Tundra Books. What a huge year it has been for these guys. And to top it off with the TD Award, which is so coveted, congratulations, all of you. Now, let's see how the bros reacted. You are the winners of the TD Canadian Children's Literature Oh, Award. my God. Oh, <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Wow. Mind-blowing. Uh, that, that, that is mind-blowing. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the most incredible news ever. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Thank you so much for this award. We're so honored to be among such distinguished company. I'd like to extend our sincere congratulations to all our fellow nominees. This truly is a golden age for Canadian children's books and the list of nominees is a wonderful and diverse reflection of that. Thank you to the Canadian Children's Book Centre for all you do to promote and celebrate Canadian books. A huge thank you to TD for selecting the Barnabas Project as a recipient of the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award. We couldn't be more thrilled or more thankful. The Barnabas Project was an idea we had over 30 years ago. It started as a single drawing by Devin and a name, Barnabas the half-mouse, half-elephant creature living in a mysterious lab beneath a pet store. He lived in our imaginations for all those decades, and like the character in the book, the drawing was hidden away underground, at the back of Eric's storage locker at the bottom of a stockpile. There he waited in hibernation until the time was right for him to emerge from the shadows. It was a long journey to publication and we have so many people to thank for making this book possible. First and foremost, our publisher, Tundra Books, Penguin Random House Canada. Tara Walker was the first person we told about Barnabas and was the first person to fall in love with them. I've often heard Tara say, when considering a project, I like it, but do I love it? And that really is the most important question. It's a difficult undertaking to make any book and you really have to love the book you're working on. Tara was not only our publisher, she was also our editor, art director, and creative co-conspirator. No one brings more talent, tenacity, or insight to a book. She honors the author's voice while gently steering the book towards its best possible form. The book si simply wouldn't exist without her. Thank you, Tara. A huge thanks is also due to our entire brilliant team at Tundra. Margot, Kelly, Kristen, Evan, Carla, Sylvia, and Vicky. All books are a collaboration, and we're lucky enough to be working with the very best collaborators, full of a passion and commitment to producing great books that was truly inspiring and humbling. Eric and I would also like to thank our wonderful agent, Kirsten Hall, who has been with us on this journey since the very beginning. Thank you for believing in us, Kirsten. Thank you for the light, Ishan, that showed us the path. A good agent is an advocate, therapist, cheerleader, and rainmaker. And Kirsten is all of those things and more. She's also a dear friend, and I hope someday soon we can sit on a rooftop again, sipping champagne, to celebrate this amazing achievement. Lastly, we'd like to thank our wonderful and supportive family. My wife, Sarah, who's always believed in me, and my children, who inspire me every day, Napoleon, Ronan, and Juliet. We'd also like to thank our parents, our dad for telling us stories when we were kids to spark our imagination, and our mom who helped us put together our very first picture book about dinosaurs, which we drew in crayon. You never stopped believing in us, and you never stopped inspiring us. Yes, thanks, Mom and Dad. And thank you again, to TD and the CCBC for this wonderful honor. Have a great night, everyone. What an incredible way to finish off today's ceremony here at the Harborfront Center in downtown Toronto. Now those guys are all unbelievably talented and I love that what they created was started together as a kid, growing up and developing into a full-fledged professional partnership. As a creative person myself, I've always been inspired to see other creative people who follow their dreams and make it big. I mean, are there any other $50,000 prizes for a host of a book award ceremony? Because uh, I could be a nominee.
at least, hopefully. <laughs> we are grateful for all of our award sponsors, partners, and many individuals who made donations for these awards so that the 2021 CCBC Book Awards could be a successful celebration of the best of Canadian books for kids and teens. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's almost a wrap for us. This has been a lot of fun. And even though we were not quite ready to get back in person, we still want people to have a chance to see old friends and make new connections, as well as have the chance to win some pretty cool, exciting prizes. So go grab yourself something to drink and meet us for our exclusive virtual after party by going to bookcenter.ca slash virtual bar. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone. Have a great Halloween weekend and drink home safely. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.